Welcome back to Worship Your Game, and today, the Cosmic Encounter Power Showdown Part 9, uh, we are getting through the Nanny Bracket, as we can call it. Well, Nanny was randomly the highest seed here. Uh, so first off, we've got Muckraker versus Reserve, and uh, Reserve's kind of the, the power to play more cards, do more stuff, uh, add reinforcements in. Muckraker, all about throwing people... Uh, under the bus, uh, throwing slander and uh, accused winning allies of subversive intent uh, and getting bribes from that. Uh, it, it's it's a fun way to to get cards, uh, and in my experience, more cards better. Uh, plus. I like the flair on Muckraker a whole lot more than the flair on Reserve. And Muckraker is just a cool name. So Muckraker moving on to face oh. Nanny. Now, Muckraker against Nanny. Uh, Nanny is this... this uh, well, I consider all essence powers to be weirder powers. Uh, but Nanny uh, gives out uh, essence cards when they're not the main player... Uh, to motivate a player, you give them one of your negotiate cards. Um, uh, and a consequence. Uh, if they uh, if they reveal a negotiate, they get the incentive on the consequence card. If they don't reveal a negotiate card, they get the punishment. Um, and then they're in timeout. Uh, so they can't... Uh, when they're in timeout, they can't participate in the game or communicate. And, you know, I played original Cosmic when Silencer was a power. And being silenced just isn't fun. I think Nanny has a nice twist because you get a choice. Do you want to be in this or do you not? Um, my gut instinct tells me Nanny should not advance. But the Cosmic side of me says Nanny should definitely advance so nanny is moving on uh, evil twin versus lightning uh, evil twin basically takes a player uh for a round and says hey you're going to take all punishments for me lightning well lightning's just a bad power so uh evil twin moves on over lightning uh, explorer versus anarchist anarchist adds chaos adds even more chaos to a game that's all about chaos. Explorer adds these extra planets and you get uh, bonus points to your attack based on how you occupy these planets. If you're there alone, you get four. If you, if you aren't, uh, you get uh, less. And uh, so Explorer moves on. And then Explorer versus Evil Twin, while I love the concept of uh, having somebody cover for you, um, I love the idea of getting even more planets into the game more. So Explorer moving on over Evil Twin. Uh, Explorer versus Nanny. Uh, I gotta give it to the fun. Explorer is just a more dynamic, more, uh, more variety of how to distribute ships and all of that. So uh, we're going there. Um, Kronos... Versus Perfectionist. This is now the bottom half of the bracket. Uh, Kronos, we get to do the time warp again. Uh, and that is all... Uh, you play out an encounter, and then if Kronos doesn't like the results, they say, okay, we're doing that again. Kronos gets their card back. You have to set your encounter card aside. So there's this great mind game. Perfectionist gets to be very picky about the cards that they draw. If they don't like them, they make a stack... They can negotiate with the stack. While I love being able to do things twice, I really do. I, I, I think Kronos could easily advance. The novelty of Perfectionist, being able to be very, very picky about the cards that go into your hand. Just way more fun. Uh, hunger. Hunger versus Observer. Now, if you've watched my video on Observer, uh, you know that I probably like it more than most people. I, uh, I think it's a neat power, uh, especially when you get into bigger games. It makes you a much more desirable ally. Um, hunger, you get to take a card at random from each player's 
hand at the start of your turn and at the start of each other player's turn, you take a card at random from that player's hand. So you are messing with hands. And I like that power. I, I think that's a... Uh, that's a way just to to add a little bit of unpredictability. You're always going to have cards coming in and nobody gets to protect a flare. And uh, that that just creates better um, better choices. So I, I'm giving it to hunger. Observer fights val valiantly, but hunger definitely more interesting. Now perfectionist. Better than Hunger. Perfectionists gets to be very picky about their cards. Hunger, while getting more cards, not uh, having any say in what they're getting. Leviathan versus Greenhorn. Uh, Leviathan is slinging around planets. Um, just to bring up Leviathan here. Uh, they have the power of, power of world ships. Uh, they get... They have the power to choose one of their home planets that has no opposing ships on it and send it through the gate to attack as a world ship. So you are physically picking up a planet and going, whop. Uh, you had 20 for that, plus one for each ship you have. Uh, you get your planet back if you lose, uh, but all your ships go to the warp. Uh, yeah. There's just something so fun and so satisfying about bringing a planet with you. And it's a plus 20. Uh, the downside is it's only as the offense. Greenhorn. Uh, Greenhorn on the other side. Basically, you get to do all of the things that new players do uh, on purpose. Uh, you get to show somebody a card in your hand, ask them a question. Uh, whenever you don't have an attack card in your hand, you get to draw a new hand. Uh, you get to rearrange your ships uh, and put them even where you don't have a home colony. You can play a kicker after encounter cards are revealed. You play in reinforcements even though you weren't involved in the encounter. Play rifts and artifacts. Uh, as any player, any phase, you know, play the Mobius tubes out of phase. It, it's Greenhorn breaks the game in the best of ways. Greenhorn is the, the cheater's power. It, it, it's, there's something satisfying about it. I'm not going to say it's more satisfying than launching a planet at somebody, but Greenhorn is still a fun power. And uh, one that I, I hate losing here this early. Uh, Xenophile versus Assessor. Uh, Xenophile gets uh, more powerful for everybody that lands in the Xenophile system, which is awesome. Uh, you want to make deals. You don't mind losing on defense. Uh, you want people invading your system. That's how the Xenophile gets their kicks. Assessor... Hmm. Well, Assessor is new, uh, but Assessor is uh, over here. And basically, they're just getting random cards. Uh, uh, whenever somebody puts ships into a, the encounter, you draw a card at random from that player's hand, put it face down on your power sheet. Cards on this sheet are not part of your hand. But you get to look at them, and once you have eight or more cards on the sheet, you choose one to add to your hand, then discard the rest. This feels like a worse hunger. Hunger, you get cards every turn. Uh, Assessor, you're getting them every time somebody sends ships in. Uh, but yeah, Xenophile's my, my way, yes please, power. Um, now, Xenophile versus Leviathan. Uh, I struggle here. I, I really like being able to launch a freaking planet at somebody. But uh, Xenophile, it's just, you get to add or subtract three from your side's total for each foreign colony in your home system. And you don't lose your power because you have too few home colonies. Th this is, there's something so satisfying about the Xenophile. Uh, 
I, I don't know. I just, I love the xenophile. So I'm moving it on. Now, xenophile versus perfectionist. I, uh, I struggle here because I like the xenophile. I like the xenophile a lot. I think I like the perfectionist just a little bit more. Being able to be very nitpicky about your cards makes makes me happy. Both powers uh, require other players to cooperate with you. Xenophile needs players to land in your system. Perfectionist needs people to ask you to ally. Uh, or you need other ways to get cards. But uh, Perfectionist also has a better flair. So that's why Perfectionist is going to move on. There you go. There you have it. One of these brackets done in 11 minutes. So hopefully you appreciate the even more expedient nature of this. And uh, we'll keep going with these. All right. Thanks for watching. We're uh, now at like the halfway point, at least for the first round. Or the first initial bracketing of this. We're getting there, folks. Thank you all for watching. Till next time, keep rushing up your game. Take care.